record after all the foolishness is done. So um, with that, baby, would you do me a big favor and get me my, um, I have my tea lemonade thingy right there. What's that? Um, so with that being said, welcome, welcome, welcome to Mindset Monday. And I just wanted to start this call off with the way that we should start any month and close every month, which is one, console any kind of defeats. If you have anything to where you felt like I wanted to do more and I wanted this to happen and that to happen and that did not happen, um, we want to make sure that we are uh, making sure that we're consoling our people because guys, the beautiful part about it is we get to start over every single morning. As long as you wake up, you can basically start over, which is a beautiful thing when you wake up, right? Um, so if anyone feels a little down based on how you closed out last month, it's okay. Because this month can be a better month. This month, uh, you can basically go out and do more. And what I recommend in starting your month, here's a couple things that we could do. Number one, you can basically get in touch with other, my wife's even like walking around the back side so she's not like, because there's nothing in it. Oh, well, thank you for getting my empty cup. I appreciate that. You're such a sweetheart. I must have drank it all. Um, so with that, what you want to be doing is you want to get on and find out who on your team wants to run this month, what their goals are, what they want to do. What I would be doing is reaching down to the people that you have in your, is who muted? Oh, somebody's asking if I'm muted. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I see the little microphone thing moving. So I guess people can hear me or they would also be sending me nasty messages like we can't hear you, all kinds of fun stuff. So um, thank you, baby. That was so kind. Um, so what we want to be doing right now is we want to be digging down into our team and finding out who has a goal for this month, who basically in the month of May would like this to be your month. And what does that look like? What is that goal that you would like to have? And then what I would be doing is I would find out who wants to run with you. Well, I'm brand new and I don't have anybody to work with and I don't whatever. Great. Then you have the ability to call your team leader and you could say, hey, I'm ready to make this happen. And then they can create a plan with you, for you, to help you to make this your month. So what does that look like? I might reach out to a few people and say, hey, we're making a run this month. Um, hey, what's, what's your goal for this month? What would you like to see happen? I'm not going to make people feel uncomfortable. I'm not going to tell them, oh, your goal should be you should be a millionaire this month or you should be whatever. Like that's not going to happen. And that doesn't work. See, this is the thing about this style of marketing is that people have their own goal and sometimes their goal might not be your goal. Like I would love everyone on the team to say, you know what, this is my month and I want this to be a huge month. I want it to be the best month ever. I want to basically, you know, turn whatever that number is for you. That's what I'd love to hear. And sometimes people might tell you that and then they don't necessarily have actions that are congruent with that. So I don't beat them up. I don't tell them because this is a beautiful part. We all have our own business. This is your business and you can do whatever it is that you want to do. But what I do recommend doing is one, you know, you'll hear me say two, th two sides of it, which is crazy, right? you want to set a realistic goal for yourself as well as there are no realistic goals if you have a huge dream and a vision. And, the, and what do I mean by that? Well, you can set, I want you to set a huge goal based on what you're willing to do. See, when we set huge goals, when we were launching, we were willing to do whatever it took. So those goals weren't unrealistic. Does that make sense? See, the, the only way that a, a big goal is unrealistic is if you're not willing to do any appropriate actions that bag that goal. So if we set a big goal that we want to achieve, whatever it might be, and hey, a big goal for you if you're brand new, a big goal that you might envision as a big goal 
might be, I want to go hit bronze this month. Some of you all might have a really big goal, might be star if you're brand new. But what I want to tell you is that if you find other people that have that same goal, silver is not a big deal for you if that's the case. It all boils down to you finding a few people that want to run with you. So what I recommend doing in starting the month and launching the month is basically dig down into your team. And if you say, well, I don't have anybody because I'm telling you what happens is people go look at what's happening right now and their numbers. And they're like, well, if you have a big goal to run this month, make your own list of people that you can call and basically start running your own numbers if you don't have anybody that's running right now. It's really that simple. So basically right now, I have a list of multiple people that I've not only worked with, I brought in my, my trainer this week. He came on board. So we have big goals that we're going to start running together, um, which has been a two-year process. Remember last week we were talking about no means what? Not now. The trainer watching me for time and time and time. And basically after he's watching, next thing you know, he's like, maybe I need to rethink this thing and maybe we need to work together, right? So the thing is, is that no means not now. And, and basically, so what I'm assessing with him is what are his goals? What does he want it to look like? What is that boom? And then we set a plan, a strategy based on what that is. And then we run through the four-step process. Now, I'm not necessarily sure and I need to follow up with him a little bit tonight because apparently he must be sharing the link that I sent him instead of using his own link because I've gotten like 15 messages today that, that basically his name looked at videos. And I can't imagine he's looking at the same video 15 times in a day, but that's also a good thing because it tells me that he must be sharing that video with people, which is telling me that people are checking out the video, right? So with that being said, um, you wanna find out who wants to run with you. And then you're gonna basically come up with a strategy of what that is and what it looks like based on the time that they can realistically devote. So guys, let's, let's kind of break this down a little bit on what it looks like. So um, I basically reach out to, let's just use Randy because she's one of the people on the screen. I'll reach out to Randy. I'm going to reach out to Hillary and I'm going to reach out to, you know, Sean, right? And I'm going to call them up and I'm going to say, hey, um, Randy, I have big goals this month. I'm, I'm looking to basically find out who is ready to run with me this month. And if they do, what that looks like. And you might say, I'm looking for people that want to hit star. They might, might already be star. They might already be bronze. And some of the people I've called are well above that, like black diamonds, right? But the thing is, is that, um, and, and higher than that, roll black diamonds, all that good stuff, right? But the bottom line is, is I'm going to say, who wants to run with me? What does that look like? And then I'm going to say, how much time can you realistically devote? And they're going to tell me what that is. And then basically we're going to say, all right, this is what we want to be doing during that time based on the hours that they say. Now, guys, if you are effectively approaching or prospecting people like this weekend, um, I went on a uh, it's called a poker run or whatever. It's you go by boat and you, and you basically bar hop and you get cards and then you go to this. We didn't do the whole thing, um, but at any rate, we hopped. And everywhere I went, I met people. And in meeting people, like my wife was literally like, who are all these people? Because I somehow my phone and my, um, and my computer are all linked up together. So she's seeing all these text messages from people that I'm meeting there and saying, hey, send me your info. And basically I'm getting, I'm getting them to text me their name and information. And then I'm following up with it with a, uh, because, you know, some people like, it was just easier for me to go instead of saying, what's your number? What's this? What's that? Hey, te my, text me. My number is this. Their phone was in their hand. Boom. And then they're texting me. And then that's how I went through doing it. But it was like, boom, 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 person after person. Right. So my point is, is that in setting up that system for them, you want to basically run them through the steps. Where are the steps? One, approaching people. 
sharing a quick story. In other words, be a product of the product. But if you're out, you have to talk to people, right? And then what you do, I share a quick story, super quick story, depending on where we're going and what we're doing. Boom, quick story. I'm talking about, especially if you're out bar hopping or whatever, poker running or whatever. Basically, you don't have time to tell your life story of how the product did all this stuff, right? You have to have a quick 30 second commercial, like super quick, right? Super, super quick. And in fact, 20 seconds is probably better if you can get it, boom, 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 boom. And some of them I just said, hey, I'm working on a project. Don't know if it'll be for you or not, but um, do you keep an open mind when it comes to business? Yes, awesome, we need to talk. Text me your information, we'll talk later. And that's literally it, boom, that's it. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna text them. I'm gonna say it's the Happy Co. So you're gonna be looking, I'm gonna send you a quick link. Boom, I'm gonna send them a quick link. Then when I get on the phone with them, and follow up, hey, you checked out the link. Hey, let me share a quick story with you. So I might share the story then. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lead them to the next step. If I gave them one video, I'm gonna get them to another video or I'm gonna get them in a Facebook group or something like that. And then I'm gonna go to the next step, boom, pop them on a Zoom or pop them on a call with somebody else, send them samples, it all depends, right? But either way, I'm always working the four steps. All right, so now you find out with that person what their goal is, and then set up that time with them that they're gonna actually be doing income producing activity, which is either prospecting new people or, um, let me tell this person no. I'll call you later. All right, yeah. Um, all right, we gotta unmute. Um, all right, so now we're gonna be basically following up with them and we're gonna be running them through the model and, and let them know what it is that they're gonna to have to do, which is the four steps, right? Now the goal is, is if somebody says that they're gonna run with you, what I would try to do, I'm working on, I'm working on it, what's the rest? Um, oh, somebody's wanting to know exactly what I was saying. Um, so let me finish that. This person's trying to come to my house for a crawfish bowl. So let me, all right, that's done. So I'm working on a project. It may or may not be for you. Do you keep an open mind when it comes to business? Yes. It's really not complicated stuff. What is it exactly? Have you heard about the happy coffee everyone's been talking about? No, what is that? Oh my gosh. A friend of mine shared this with me. It sounded too good to be true. When I tried it, it was blown away. We put together a strategy and within several months, we were doing over a million dollars a month. Hey, we just, we just rebranded the company. It's crazy what's going on. I'm gonna send you the information that'll explain it better than I can. Done. Simple stuff. And guys, I don't care what your business is doing. It's the same story because the company was doing well over millions of dollars within the first couple of months. So you can say, hey, we launched this crazy coffee. It sounded too good to be true. We were doing several million dollars in just a few months. We just rebranded re based on the crazy growth we were having. And I'm looking to partner with the right people. It may or may not be for you. I'm going to send you some information. I'll explain it way quicker than I can right now because we're, you know, whatever you're doing. You want to be in a hurry and not have time to break down all the stuff. So that's what I would say, something to that effect. So guys, if you feel like you have no posture in saying this, practice with your spouse. Practice with someone and just get to where it sounds normal for you. Hey, I'm working on a project. It may or may not be for you. Do you keep an open mind when it comes to business? Or you can say, hey, I'm working on a project. Do you keep an open mind when it comes to business? And then say, it may or may not be for you. Hey, let me send you some information. I'll explain it quicker. I'm going to introduce you to my business partner. And then we'll figure out if it will be a fit, you know, and you can already throw it out there like, oh my gosh, you got to meet my business partner. But we'll talk about that later. And then you can just throw that out there. That way it's even really simple. When you call them back and you're like, hey, remember I told you about my business partner? Oh my gosh, they're excited to meet you. 
Boom. And then that's really easy stuff to be able to, to do the follow-up. Does that make sense? Let's see people asking questions. All right. So now we're launching a new person. And we're basically, or it, it could be a new person, it could be an old person, whatever. If you're launching someone and they commit that they want to hit a certain goal, what I would try to do is get them, this is simple stuff, guys, and some will do it and some won't. You tell them that their job is to put you on the phone, depending on their time, with at least one person a day. I don't care how busy they are. They can put you on the phone one person a day. If, if you had, imagine this, you have 10 people on your team and each one of them are putting you on the phone with one person a day. Can we agree that our business will grow? If some, unless, you know, you're just saying crazy stuff when you put them on, the, when they put them on the phone with you. I mean, it's, I'm sorry, it's going to grow. If you don't know what to say, then you're going to link up with one of your team leaders and they're going to commit. So again, if you're working and you're making this thing happen and you're saying, I'm going to make it happen and you don't know what to say, if they were to put you on the phone, you have already contacted one of your team leaders, right? Somebody you work with and they're going to be ready to handle those calls for you. So let's clarify that. If you're new and you have a few people that are wanting to work with you as well, and you're not, you don't feel comfortable to be able to do it on your own, you're going to have a team leader that's going to be committed to, to be on those calls with you. It's pretty simple. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing, I have messages coming from everywhere over here. Um, so what we're going to be doing is that. And then what we're going to be doing is finding out, boom, they're going to be doing it. And then we're just going to be saying, hey, now this is the last part of it. Now you say that you want to have ABC happen before the end of the month, correct? Yes. Awesome. How do you want me to support you in that if you're not following through? Because everyone wants to be supported a different way. Some people you might want to call on and love on and all that other stuff. Some people just want you to slap them upside the head and say, dude, you told me like Sean's raising his hand. Sean, you told me that you want to make this thing happen, dude. And you committed to me that you have an hour a day that you can work. And we said, worst case scenario, one person a day on the phone with me and you're not doing it. Where, where's the problem? What's, what's the disconnect? That's with Sean's personality. So now let's just say I get on the phone. Let's just use Hillary as an example. And Hillary doesn't want me to be all upfront like that. I'm like, Hillary, girl you know what? I just know that you have it within you for greatness and all that. And earlier this month, you said when we launched this month, you said that you wanted to make this happen and you were committed to put me on the phone with one person a day. What can I help you with to, to make you or, or how can I help you? Because I can't make you do anything. What can I do to assist you in, in making sure that that happens? What can I do? Where's, where's the disconnect? You know, like, how can we help this happen? So what's going on in your life? Tell me about, it. you know, it, depending on their personality style is how you're going to work with them, right? So with that being said, guys, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get their permission to coach them. We're going to get their permission to coach them. And then we're going to get basically, Sean's over there saying, I need to be beat. Um, we're we're going to get their permission to coach them based on their style because we ask them how they want us to work with them. We ask them. So like you see Hillary putting in there, how are you feeling? That's because if she's not doing it, it has to do with the way that she's feeling about things based on her personality style, right? So with that, we're going to ask them that. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, again, now let's talk to our our team leader or who we're working with on this situation. So guys, that's what we need to be doing in launching the month to basically set your goal. So in closing month, we wanna console all of our defeats. Anybody that feels down, they don't feel excited about where they are. They don't feel excited about whatever happened. You wanna console their, their defeat, make them feel more comfortable, let them know, hey, it's a new month. Do you have a new goal for the new month? I wanna assist you in that. Who wants to run? And you could basically say, who wants to hit bronze this month? 
Who wants to hit bronze? If they're not hitting bronze, if they're hitting silver or whatever, boom. What, how can I assist you in hitting the next goal for anybody that wants to run? Then we're going to go through, we're going to assess all the things that I just went off, especially with squirrels running everywhere, phones ringing and all that other stuff. I jumped all over, but you get where I'm coming from. We're going to assess where they want to go. Boom. And then we're going to work towards that. And then we're going to follow up and find out who's basically going through those goals with this. And if they're not, how do we coach them? How do we basically work with them from there? So with that being said, I'm going to bring on a good friend of mine. We're going to talk a little bit about mindset. In fact, I'm going to turn it over to him for a second. So Sean McLean over there that wants to be beat upside the head. If he's not doing what he asked to be doing, <laughs> and I'm joking. <laughs> Sean, I know you always yes. have uh, good stuff, and he's actually messaging me going, hey, I'd love to share tonight. Uh, so let, let the people know what is the mindset <laughs> or whatever you wanted to talk about. <laughs> Now that is that's just so funny. Um, you pick me and Hillary because uh, Chris comes to me one day when we meet up at the Diamond event, and he's like, "Hey, you got to meet Hillary because she thinks you're a real butthole." I'm like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, I don't know. I told her you were cool, right?" And then Hill comes up and she literally <laughs> tells me, "Dude, you're blah blah blah." And then we have this amazing conversation, and it just goes to show you. You know, I, and I know you guys, like Robin does a very in-depth training on the color personalities. And that's all cool. And it's fun to know who you are. I know who I am. I love to be blue, but I operate out of red. I really do. I got to get stuff done in a set amount of time so that I could go be blue tomorrow, right? And it comes across that way because I've all, everything that I've ever had, I've created with these two hands. Like I've never hit the lottery. I didn't, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. You know, my parents aren't politicians. Like, you know, I think Credence Clearwater, Clearwater Revival did a song about that, right? Um, so I operate in the red, but Hillary nailed it. And Chris just nailed it tonight. If I talk to her the way I need to be motivated, done dealing. She is going to call me what she called me the first day we met in person. And, um, and it's not true. I'm really a nice guy, but it's, it, this is the only industry guys where we can get on a zoom and get fed little nuggets that literally will change not only our relationships with friends and prospects, but our family, our marriages, everything. Like what other industry, I can promise you this. All the irrigation and landscaping we've been doing over the last four months is not helping my marriage. I could, <laughs> Kim, Kim just walked by and smiled. She didn't say nothing because she's been on that shovel digging, right? And uh, But this industry really does that. So she said she's a good woman. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit tonight about mindset. Um from maybe a, just a different a different point of view. It, it just keeps coming up a little bit here and there, and, and not only uh, with this business, with but with other businesses. Uh, I'll just share a little bit. Um, my son has now taken over our Amazon business. And when he got started, like we've been killing it the last three or four months on a particular product that we pay $2.50 for. And he's averaging 30 bucks a piece on this product. And he feels horrible about it. And that's mindset. That's all that is. The market is going to pay what the market pays. We built a house back in 2005. And uh, long story short, bubble burst in 08. We finally sold the house in 2012 for 140. We were way upside down. I could promise you that. 140, brand new. It had everything we didn't skimp on anything i mowed a i mowed and did some cleanup on a house that's selling right now in this market at 170 grand that three or four years ago may, might have been 60 or seventy thousand dollars that's mind-blowing but guess what the market is going to pay what the market pays we have to allow our mindset to go where the market is all right and the reason i'm sharing that is this you hear a lot of times, you hear us talk about the 20 percenters and the 80 percenters. Well, I can tell you right now that if you're on this call, it's
especially if you have the ability to have your camera on and you're on this call tonight, that you're a 20 percenter. You're a 20 percenter because it has zero to do with where you're at in life and it has everything to do with where you want to go. The reason you're on this call is because you want to sharpen your sword. You want to get better at what you're doing. You want to lead better. You want to be able to bring in more prospects. You want to help more people with this happy co, right? That's a 20 percent or conversation. An 80 percent or conversation is like, eh, I'm okay getting my product for free. Yeah, that's good. I'm okay getting a discount. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. We love the 80 percenters. But if you're wanting to be better, you're a 20 percenter. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. When you go out tomorrow and you're in your daily life and you're using the nuggets that Chris just dropped, I saw some people in the comments going, wait a minute, finish that thought. Give me, uh, give me the rest of it. And, and I get it. I'm not saying that I don't want to know because I'll call Chris up and go, wait a minute, what'd you tell me to say the other day? Because I want to get it down, right? But I got to make it mine. It's got to be my words. So you can't be so scripted that you're like, uh, hang on, girlfriend. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, and then you try to, it can't be Chris's words. It's got to be, it's got to be like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's got to become you. You got to take that script that he's using and what he's saying. It's got to become you. And there's only one way that that happens. Confidence. And how do you get the confidence in doing it? You practice. You practice. And how do you get practice? You screw it up a whole bunch. You have to do it. I promise you this. Listen, this is so crazy. Whether you're an Elon Musk fan or not. <laughs> Listen, this guy went from PayPal to Tesla to two or three other things to now he's trying to put people on Mars. How many millions did he lose every time he tried to land, not blast a rocket into space, land a rocket on Earth sitting upright and it falls over and blows up? How many millions? It's called a failure, ain't it? Or... Did he learn a lesson? That's totally up to you, whichever one that was. And guess what? Guess what? There's not a wrong answer. Because if you believe that that's a failure, you're going to go out tomorrow and you're going to try to talk to somebody in the grocery store and you're going to try to say word for word the script and you're going to miss a word and you're going to subconsciously pause and you're going to feel an instant flash of heat to your face and your ears. My, mine's doing it all right now. I can feel them right now. My ears are like, feels like flames on my ears. And then you'll scurry along and you won't even finish it. And that will kill you because you know what? The next six weeks go by and you, I can't, I'm so embarrassed. I can't even get on the mindset call because I totally blew it. And you'll miss the mindset call and then you'll get cold. And then your, your sponsor, your, your friend, your business partner will reach out and go, girl, I know you had, I know you had some goals this week. What's up? And you're like, honey, yeah, I got that message, uh, but I'm not calling her back. And then you'll get, you'll get away from the campfire a little bit more and you'll get cold and you'll get cold. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. Number one, just trust me. I can't say it any other way, okay? Just trust me in this. The people that you think are thinking about you are probably not thinking about you. Just write that down somewhere. I, I'm telling you, I'll tell you a quick story. And I, I hadn't even brought it up since last night because I've just learned to let things go. But we were in the gym and I'm watching my wife train my son and they're doing some things a little bit, a little bit off. And she asked me for some help. And as I'm trying to correct him, he's kind of like not, I just told him, you're not coachable. <laughs> and, and my very, I said, dog, you're not coachable. I'm going about doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I am. So no, you're not. I am. I said, the fact that you're answering me that way tells me you're not ready to receive what I'm trying to tell you. And then Kim says, I'm not going to stand here and do this in the gym. I'm, I'm going to walk off. Why? Because you start to get the, that heat it's going up your neck, it's going up your face, going up your ears. Why do we get that? Because we think there's other people listening to our conversation 
that have opinions about who we are because of what they've seen in the last seven seconds. And I hate to tell you, but they probably had music on in their earbuds the whole time. They didn't even hear what you thought they heard and they could care less. They just happen to be looking around the gym between sets while they're taking a swig of their drink. And we thought they were watching us. They don't care, guys. I promise you, they don't care. And for me personally, here's how I kind of got over that in my life. I went, yeah, they're not paying my bills and they're not going to be laid in my bed tonight. Now, I'm not real worried about their opinion. And I just moved on. And I'm just sharing this because I really think this is a piece of mindset that if you could truly get, I wish to God the people that I thought were thinking about me actually thought about me, whether they were positive or negative. I don't care. Th think about that for a second. We're so worried about what people think about us. And the truth be known is they're not. They're watching. What do people watch on TV? I don't even know because we don't really watch TV. They're watching TV. They're worried about getting what they're there to get done, whether it was at the gym or whether it's coming home and get dinner cooked or whether they're not going to remember that you didn't say it right when you tried to say it. So, so just trust me, next time you're at the grocery store, next time you reach out to your friend, just do it. Just do it. And if you keep doing it and keep doing it, you will iron out what is natural for you. 100%. And then I'm going to end on this real quick. Because every single one, ow, my hamstring just cramps. It was leg day last night. Sorry. That was right. I know it was really random, but I folded my leg under my chair and I went, whoo, see, I don't even cuss anymore. So that was just random too. I know. So listen, if you'll just do this, and continue to do it and do it from the viewpoint of it's just practice. It's just practice. It's just practice. It's just practice because you're, you're, uh, you're a runner that's going to lock arms with you and run from you. You might not meet them for six months. Hey, you might meet them in the next six days, but you won't know if you're not out there consistently sharpening your sword, consistently trying, consistently trying to figure out how to make it yours. You can't, you can't say it the way I say it. You can't say it the way Chris, you can't say it the way Hillary says it. We are totally different people. When I'm with Chris and I'm listening to him and I watch his body language and how he operates when he's with his friends, totally not the way I operate. And the same for Hillary. Well, a little bit of time we've been around, but I've been on her calls and I've listened to her and, and, and I'll just be honest with you guys. When I see her on this call, I see this very strong woman, and I'm not saying she's not, but I would have naturally thought she would match me in this type A in your face kind of energy. But you heard it tonight. Like that's not the kind of coaching that, that works for her. It's not what works for my wife either. And it's the hardest thing to remember because I get motivated by, and listen. How many times, Chris, have I told you, I wish you would just kick my ass? If, but that's not Chris. And I don't fault Chris for that because I know that's not Chris. You see how that works? When you start to understand how people actually are, then, and it's not Kim either. Like Kim will never, like, she's not that nagging, like, did you take the trash out? Did you make that call? You need to call five people today. You got to switch a penny from one pocket to the other before you can take a shower and get in this bed. Like it, it's not her. It's not going to happen, right? I have to make myself do that. Now, Ricky, on the other hand, Ricky would fly over here and punch me in the face if I told him that's what I needed. And that's just how it would be. <laughs> I might need to make that bet with him. But the point is this. You got to just get out more and more often. Forget the fact that you think anybody because I can promise you, nobody, all those people we think that are watching us in the gym have this little family altercation and, and they now they think we're crazy. They're not even thinking about you, period. Much less do they think you're crazy. I promise you that. I promise you that. It, and, and those of you that have been around churches, you ever remember, remember the prayer chain? 
you know, hey, Chris, can you get the prayer chain going? Yeah, I'll call Hillary. Hey, Hillary, Sean asked me to reach out to you. Can you get the prayer chain going? You know why? You know why we have to do that? Because people aren't sitting around going, you know, hey, Chris, what does Sean do today? Does he need prayer? Oh, I don't know. Let me reach out to him and see. People are not doing that. So get over the fact that you think that they have an opinion of you. And if they do, it's theirs anyways. There's nothing you can do about it but be you. And just go out there and consistently practice. Here's what's going to happen when you do that. And I'll end on this. When you do this consistently, you will start to build a pipeline of people. Even if you screw it up, they're in your pipeline. You get to come back in six months when you perfected it or six days or six weeks or however long it takes you to perfect or feel good about what you're saying and how you're reaching out to people. And you get to reach back out to that person and you get to say, hey, Chris, I know I ran into you in the grocery store, what, five, six weeks ago? And I totally was trying to share something with you. And, and I'm so green. I just, <laughs> I know. Listen, I embarrassed myself and I kind of ran out of there like a fool. But I'd love to come by. And if you got five minutes, I'm going to sit down and just share something with you. The easiest way to get out of your own way is just to say what's evident. Go ahead and call the elephant in the room, the elephant in the room, and just say, I know I was a, a weirdo. I know I didn't, what I was saying didn't make sense. I know that I turned beet red and ran out of the, out of the grocery store. And nine out of 10 times that person's going to go, really? I, I didn't, I didn't realize that's what, what happened. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I got five minutes. Come by whenever you get a chance or send me what you got. Or yeah, I'd love to connect on a phone call. It's, it's up here. It's totally up here. And just like my son, when he took over that Amazon and he thought he was ripping people off, marking a product up from $2.50 to averaging around 30, he's been getting 50 on you know, some of them. <laughs> Craziest thing in the world. I laugh because I just think it's funny to see people pay whatever they're willing to pay. But that's the difference between being in business and having a hobby. Yeah, we only paid $2.50. If we wanted to sell it for $5, we'd be making $2.50 and doing somebody a favor. But that wouldn't be a business. We wouldn't be able to pay ourselves, pay the business, pay the taxes, have something left over. It would be a hobby, right? So start thinking like that and be consistent in your practice. And by accident, you'll actually build a pipeline of people into your business, which is what every single one of us have to have, no matter what level we're at. Boom, thank you so much, Sean. So it's funny, as, as Sean was sharing that, it, it made me think of, um, of um, now my brain just went to Edison when he was inventing the light bulb, right? When he was talking about the, the whole thing. And so I did, I just said, Siri, uh, how many times did Edison try for the light bulb? I knew it was over a thousand times, right? And for some reason, it pulls up multiple different things. And we'll close out the call with this because, guys, it's really about failing forward, you know, um, and, and life is failing forward in everything that you do. It was, it was, I don't know what I was listening to or who or whatever, but they were talking about Jordan on how he didn't even make it on his high school team, right? And then I think it was some guys I was in the boat with, and they were talking about another one of the players that was a great, that it was the same kind of thing. Um, you know, Tom Brady, not being the starting quarterback, even for his high school and his college and stuff like that, and ends up being one of the best, you know, out there, period. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that Popeye's, you know, it might have started because we were talking about boats and Popeye, the guy that owned Popeye's was a fanatic about all these go fast boats, right? And this guy went bankrupt seven times prior to getting Popeye's, you know? So um, Ricky's saying, watch in the comments. He's talking about don't miss what's up weekly. There's going to be some huge announcements and all kinds of cool stuff happening, but we're going to, we're going to close it out with this. Um, so Basically, Edison was asked, his teacher said he was too stupid to learn anything. 
Um, his first two jobs uh, for being non, he was fired from his first two jobs for being non-productive. As an inventor, Edison made a thousand unsuccessful attempts at inventing the light bulb. When a reporter asked, fail a thousand times, Edison replied, I didn't fail a thousand times. The light bulb was, um, the light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. And the thing is, is that he found a thousand ways on how not to invent the light bulb until he figured out how to invent the light bulb. What if your success was, you knew that it was going to take ABC and there was just a number of, I have to talk to this many people before I find a superstar. If you knew the number, wouldn't you just go through the numbers and you wouldn't worry about who the numbers are, or what the numbers said, if you knew the exact number of what it would take to basically really make it happen. And I, I, there's so many that popped up, but I, this is the one I'm gonna, we're gonna close with. As a young man, this gentleman went to war as a captain and returned a private. Afterwards, he was a failure as a businessman. As a lawyer in Springfield, he was too impractical and temperamental to be a success. He turned to politics and was defeated in his, uh, in his first try for legislature. Legislature. Um, again, defeated in his first attempt to be nominated for Congress. Defeated in his application to be commissioner of general land office. Defeated in the senatorial election of 1854. Defeated in his efforts to be in the vice presidency and was defeated in the senatorial election in um, 1858. Uh, at about that time, he wrote in a letter to a friend, I am now the most miserable man living if what I feel were equally distributed to the whole, uh, to the whole human family, there would be one cheerful face on the earth. Point being was that was Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln failed time after time after time. I believe it was like 16 attempts at different races before he became president of the United States. The thing is, is that the thing that is most incredible about, you know, successful people is they don't quit. And, and guys, the beautiful part about you is the fact that you have chosen to be on a call like this. Like when, you know, Sean was talking about the 80 percenters and stuff like that. See, success is not this huge thing. It's basically simple disciplines over and over and over, repeat over time. But it's not just this huge thing. Everybody looks at it like it's an event. It's a process, not an event. You have basically successfully figured out how to not be where you are if that's where you are right now. And all you have to do is keep pushing. I don't care who you read about. I don't, if there is a successful human on the planet, if you really wanted to learn from them, you would learn through the challenges that they went through. And the number one thing that you will find is that they did not quit. If you read about the founding of this country and you read about what George Washington went through and you read about the Battle of Trenton, and how these men literally waged into battle with like there was a trail of blood because of the frostbite that was on their feet. But their vision of creating this great country was so big that they were willing to push through anything. Guys, the people that basically have had success in life, the, it boiled down to one thing. They didn't quit. And the, the bottom line is, is like my mentor told me, it takes the rest of your life to fail. And the only way to fail is to quit. Hope you guys got value tonight. Love you all. Appreciate you. Everybody have a great night. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Good night, Thank everyone. You, Chris. Thanks, awesome Chris. Call. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.